You know, when things go wrong in your life and you are wondering, where is God? God is working behind the scenes. The book of Esther, the name of God is never mentioned, but in the Hebrew, it appears in acrostic form. And every time it appears, it is a pivotal point in the story. Long before the devil plans any evil against you, God has the provision. You've got to believe that. God is positioning you. God is getting, God getting you ready not to face something that company will face or whatever. God is behind the scene. And you, you have favor with God. Hey, when God turns it around, it's turned, my friend. Hi, this is Joseph Prince. Romans 1.16 tells us that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It is through the preaching of the gospel that we'll see many people saved, restored, and gloriously transformed. Since we launched our Gospel Partner episodes free on YouTube, thousands of new people are discovering the gospel of grace on our channel daily. We have crossed millions of watch hours and we are hearing testimonies every week of precious lives being impacted. In these last days, the gospel is going out faster and stronger than ever before. So I want to thank all our gospel partners who have joined us to make more sermons and gospel resources free for people who need it. If you're not yet a gospel partner and would like to get involved, please consider signing up for one of the subscription plans on gospelpartner.com. You not only get access to more than 1,000 sermons on the Joseph Prince app and other subscriber benefits, but you also be making a direct impact on advancing the gospel of grace. Subscribe today and get your first month completely free as my gift to appreciate you for partnering with us in this gospel mission. Together, we can make a real difference. God bless you. I want to share with you how when, you know, when things go wrong in your life and you are wondering, where is God? Where is, where is God in all this? Where, 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 where are all those things that Pastor Prince pre preached about? Maybe you have had a bad diagnosis from the, the doctor. Maybe, you know, you have a problem in your family. And things seem to be like, where, where is that blessing that God promised us? Where is that, that uh, breakthrough and I prayed for? I want to tell you something. Even when things don't seem to be working in your favor, God is working behind the scenes. Amen. And sometimes God will position things in place and then bang at the right time. You see, God did not deliver Israel before the Red Sea. Right? As they were going towards the Red Sea, God did not deliver them. God waited until they were in front of the Red Sea. They see the problem. They cry out to the Lord. The enemies are, are, are marauding from behind, about to attack them, kill them, annihilate them, and then God opened up the Red Sea. So sometimes, you see, the, the thing about us is that we take things for granted. Many of you, you don't even know that God protected you from an accident, maybe yesterday. Maybe the devil planned for you to, to die before this year, last year. Maybe he sent a disease along your way that was cut short by an angel of the Lord. And the Lord delivered you. But many a times, we don't give Him praise and thanks for the things we do, do not know about. If God protected Israel all the way, you know, we talk about protection, and I wrote a book on protection, so I, 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 I believe in divine protection, but many a times, we don't call upon the Lord or we don't thank Him for a protection or a deliverance or a help rendered. We only give thanks for those that we know. So in the story here today, you'll find how God works behind the scene. We're going to look at the story of Esther. Are you all ready for Esther? Okay, how many of you read the book of Esther? The story happened in 483 BC. And the man that she married, the king of the story, many of you know the story, so I know that you know the story. So I'll just uh, let you know the historical background. The, the man that she married is a very famous man in history, all right, who fell in the battle against the Grecians, against the, the Greeks. And uh, he is Sexes, Sexes the Great, X-E-R-X-E-S, right, from history. And he's otherwise known by, in the Hebrew as Ahasuerus. And he's the one that had the beauty contest. And, and you know the story, God used Esther's beauty, or rather, the Bible says that she obtained favor so she is beautiful, but there are many other beautiful women in the land. 
But what you want is favour. And tonight, you're going to get favour from God. Amen? Every time you hear the Word, I want to tell you something about the Word of God. Every time you hear the Word, and, and, and uh, I just want to say a word to all the young people. I learned something when I was young. All right? Younger. I learned something when I was younger. I learned this, that there was a man who actually filled his grades. And uh, what happened is that he was, he was challenged by a, a, a leader to memorize the entire book of Proverbs. And he took it up. You know what, it, what happened to him? From failing grades, he got straight A's. Now, does the Bible tell you about, about geometry, about science, about geography, about history, about, about uh, law, or whatever you're studying? No, you know, it may cover all these things, but many of times it tells us stories, it, tells, it uh, talks about the Lord and, and, and what the Lord can do and all that, and yet it has a bearing on, on your life. Whatever profession you are, whether you're a student, whether you are, you, you, are, you are taking care of children, amen, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a lawyer, a doctor, whatever you are, the Word of God, when you touch God's Word, you touch the power to prosper you. There's something about reading God's Word and spending time in the Bible, studying the Bible, that prospers your way. Time and time again, God told Joshua when he had a big pair of shoes to fill, Moses just died, and God told him, meditate on my word. You'll make your way prosperous. Saleak in Hebrew. You'll make your way prosperous. And you will have good success. Not, not just success, good success. There are success that take you away from your family. Success that, that, that you know, costs another area of your life. But good success. And the Bible says in Psalms 1 that those who meditate on God's Word day and night, whatever He doeth shall prosper. Whatever. So touch God's Word, you touch prosperity. I'm not referring to money, all right? It, it may involve money because uh, when, when you prosper in all your ways, you will create wealth in your life. Amen. Are you listening, people? But not just that. Those who meditate on God's Word, His leaf will not wither. Leaf will always be green. That talks about your health. That talks about renewal of youth like the eagle. Amen. Amen. As thy days, the Bible says, as thy days, so shall thy strength be. Well, the science of the world tells us that the, the older you are, more days be behind, behind you than in front of you, they say that you decay. You, you, you get old. But that's what happens when you believe that and you're exposed to that and you've not been spending time in God's Word. You're not the flavor, the touch, the substance has not been imparted because you, you've lost touch with the Word of God. You're listening to the news. You're watching the news. You're listening to what people are saying. You're listening to experts saying that. And they have to say what they say because it's based on their five senses. It's based on their knowledge. It's based on their upbringing of their studies. Amen? Their background. But the thing is this, with you, when you spend time in God's Word, you have a different vision because like the Bible says, as thy days so shall thy strength be. More days, you have more days in front of you. Some, some of you are 20, 20 years old, right? You have 20 years in front of you. God says, as your days increase, then 40, now double. As your days increase, so shall your strength. It's opposite from the world. It's opposite from the world. And Caleb is always a minority compared to even believers. Like you have the 12 tribes, you have the 12 leaders, but only one of them believed God that my strength is as strong as I was the day Moses sent me. Amen. And now he's 85. Wow. So you think about it. You know, the Word of God will change, cleanse your mind. Amen. So you don't accept things from the world so easily. Amen. Are you listening, people? Amen. You know, when, when the world says there's no provision, and by the way, the book of Esther, number one, you know, take down notes, just write down, the name of God is never mentioned. The name of God is never mentioned. You cannot find God or the Lord mentioned at all in the book of Esther. It's one book in the Bible, the name of God doesn't appear. And yet, you see God behind the scenes. It is not so much a book of miracles, because miracles means God intervened uh, into an ordinary circumstance. But many, uh, many of the, the turning points in the book of Esther is very supernaturally natural. So it's not so much a book of miracles as it is a book of provision. God God showing Himself as the God of providence. By the way, the word providence comes from an old Latin word, which is pro video. Pro, pro video. You all hear video, you all know, right? And the word pro in Latin means before. 
Video means I see. That's where you get the video. All right? That means God sees the need beforehand and God provides. Provision, even the word provision is vision pro. Before it happens, God provides. God sees what's going to happen. You don't have to be afraid that that life will take you by surprise. I, I, I must stick to the, to the lesson today, but you know, we are here to study the Bible. Amen. Another thing about the Bible is when you touch the Bible, you touch health. Yep. Proverbs 4.22 says, they, God's words, are life. Say life. To those that find them. And health, say health. Yep. To all their flesh. Even when you don't understand, you open the Bible and you read a portion it has a cleansing, it has a reviving, it has a rejuvenating, it has a supplying, it has a health-giving effect. Amen. Amen. And people who study the Bible, you can see their faces, their faces shine. Their eyes sparkle. They look younger and they are stronger as a result. But the moment you don't don't spend time in the Word, you're not in touch with the Word, you find your life just gets mundane and you become natural. So the first thing we learn about the book of Esther is that the name of God is not mentioned, okay? But the name of God is mentioned in the, in the acrostic. You know what's acrostic, right? Acrostic, like for example, grace. How you spell grace? G-R-A-C-E. So another way of saying acrostic is um, G, God. God's. R, riches. A, at. C, Christ. E, expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. That's grace. So it's an acrostic. Can you see it? Amen? Do you know there are, there are four acrostics of the name Yahweh in the book of Esther? It's hidden. Now, how do you spell Yahweh? <laughs> Someone says Y, H. No, in Hebrew, it's going to be yud Hey vav Hey. But for convenience, we say Y, H, V, H. So you look up here. Now, remember like Chinese, it won't be hard for you to understand this. Hebrew reads from right to left. Okay? Right to left. By the way, did I tell you that when you touch God's Word, not just God's Word, it's life to those who find them, but health. Health to all their flesh. Proverbs 4.22. Health to all their flesh. You know, when you take medicine, right? Many a times, medicine, it gives you, it, uh, it helps resolve some pain or some condition, but then it's not health to all your flesh. In fact, it may cause a problem in another area. Uh, you may go to the toilet more often or something like that. But, but only God's Word is medicine that is health, Proverbs 4.22. Health to all their flesh. Amen. Every time you touch God's Word, it's health to all your flesh. So tonight, be expecting when you go out of this place, you're going out healthier, stronger. Amen? Amen? and more prosperous in every area of your life. I don't mean money alone. I mean prosperous. Amen. So that's, that's God's Word. Touch God's Word, you touch good success. Touch God's Word, you touch. Even you do, you don't, you don't understand. You all heard me share the illustration of the, the farmer who told his son to, you know, the son said, I, I don't understand. I, I, why should I read the Bible? I don't, I don't understand the Bible. The father says, okay, you know, son, you know, I understand what you're saying, but you go get me some water from the river and uh, water the plants here. Uh, the son about to take the bucket. The, son, the father said, no, take this, this uh, you know, rattan, like, like a rattan basket, wicked, wicked basket. All right, take that and fill up water. The son says, dad, this is not the whole water. Go, go ahead, just do what I say. So the son, son tried his bed. The river was nearby. Took some water and ran all the way back and he leaked. Dad, I told you. Dad said, do it again. So he did again, came back. Do it again, came back. Dad, I don't understand what you're trying to say. It cannot hold water. But the father says, look at the basket. You look at it. Look at how clean it is. So even when you don't understand God's word, it leaks. You feel it leaks. You don't understand. It's not retained. But look at how clean your mind is. Amen? 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 Amen. Yeah. And uh, it, it will renew your youth. Amen? Okay. So, say youth. Reading from right to left. I want you to memorize these letters. Very easy, okay? In Hebrew. Yud is the smallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Yud, reading from right to left. Yud, he, vav, he. You know, I, I haven't even finished yet. This church is amazing. I love this church. Amen. 
And many a times you have to explain to people from the start. All right, for you, you guys help me so much, Rudy. So this is pronounced Yahweh. We sang that song just now, right? Yud, He, Vav, He. Yahweh. And in the book of Esther, the name Yahweh is hidden in a cross stick four times. All right? One time, it appears as I am. A ye. I am that I am. Now, let me explain the cross stick. In Psalms 96, verse 11, we have the English text says this Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Would you like your earth, your, your, where you are at, be glad? Your family area be glad? Amen? Heaven must rejoice first. Then the earth will be glad. God, that's always God's priority. Can I be good? Amen. But if you look into the Hebrew, all right, reading from right to left, the Hebrew says, all right, let rejoice, Yishmaku Hashemayim Vetagel Ha'eretz. Yud, first one, He, Vav, He. Without the Lord, your earth cannot be glad. Without the Lord, heaven cannot even rejoice. Amen? So it tells you straight away that this, this is an acrostic. So although the name of God is not in the book of Esther, in your reading of your English or any other language, but in the Hebrew, it appears in acrostic form. And every time it appears, it is a pivotal point in the story. Every time it happens, it's really a game changer. It changes the whole, the whole scenario. Would you like to follow? Are you excited about that? Now, why are we telling you this? Because the same thing is happening in your life. God is working behind the scenes. So there was a man called Haman. He's an evil man. And you see the hero of the story here, Mordecai, a type of Christ. And of course, the heroine is Esther. Esther, whose name is in the Hebrew, Hadassah. Hadassah is myrtle tree. But they changed her name to the Persian name because they were, they were in Persia. And her name became Esther, which means star. And she's the star of this story. The real star is God, of course. So why is it that God doesn't reveal His name? Why? In this book, why didn't God reveal His name? During this time, Israel was not in the place where God wants them to be, right? They are in captivity. Remember the story of how they, they worship other gods than the God that brought them out of Egypt, than the God who opened up the Red Sea for them, than the God who gave them all the land flowing with milk and honey, and they started uh, uh, sinning against God and God sent prophet after prophet. Some of them, they killed the prophet and all that. And God says, finally, God says, this is it. I'm going to send you one last call. If you repent, all right, I will restore everything. But they refused and they went into captivity. Then the times of the Gentiles started. The head of gold, the breast of silver, all the way down to the feet. One day I'll teach on that in detail in the, in the vision of Daniel. Or rather the vision of Nebuchadnezzar that Daniel interpreted. And uh, it's the times of the Gentiles. We are still in the times of the Gentiles. We are now in the feet area. So it's very interesting. Israel is supposed to be the, the, the nation that leads all other nations. One day they'll be when Jesus comes back. He will rule from Jerusalem. So that prophecy will be fulfilled. But because of their sin, they were suspended. And the times of Gentiles began with Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Uh, you, you can read this in your history book. The time of Gentiles began all the way until a European, a revived, revived Roman Empire in Europe. All the, uh, now, if, in fact, you can't say Europe because the revived Roman Empire covers the entire Middle East. Even Israel is under the revived Roman Empire. Actually, talk about that. Then Iran, Iraq, and all the rest. So from here will come the Antichrist. I, I, I can't tell you where is it, is it exactly, but... It's from the previous Roman Empire. He's going to appear and he's going to bring peace, supposedly world peace to the, uh, and all the questions that the world has. He seems to be very brilliant and all that, but his, his whole purpose is to annihilate the Jews as well as Christians. Now, we won't be around because we are raptured, because we attend Bible study. Woo! So, like when Jesus told the Jewish people about AD 70 in Luke, he told them, when you see the army surround Jerusalem, you see the Roman army surround Jerusalem, right? Because of, of the rebellion of the people, they laid a siege. 
they still allow people to leave because the, the fewer people there are, the faster they will fall. Less army to fight, right? They allow people to leave. Jesus said, when you see the armies surround Jerusalem, Jesus says, flee to the mountains. Guess what? That happened in AD 70. All right? And those Christians who remembered what Jesus said, or even before AD 70, they, 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 they realized it's happening. The moment the siege is late, they fled the country. Not a single believer died. Do you know that? So this is, a, this is a prophecy. To know it beforehand is to be forearmed. Okay, let's go into the Word right now. Uh, the story of Esther. So Esther, she is the, her parents died and Mordecai took care of her. Mordecai obviously is a very elderly man and he took care of her. And the time came, chapter 1. Um, all the Indians are going to love this. Chapter 1, verse 1. It came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this was the Ahasuerus who reigned over 127 provinces from India. And all the Indians said, Amen, to Ethiopia. So India is mentioned in the Bible. Do you know China is mentioned in the Bible also? All right, if you can do a search, it's called Sinim, S-I-N-N-I-M. Im is just plural. Sin, S-I-N, is where you get chin later on. So the Bible prophesies about his people coming back from the land of China as well. Anyway, India is here. Good. In those days when King Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Sushan, the citadel, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast for all his officials and servants, the powers of Persia and Media, the nobles and the princes of the of the provinces before him. He showed the riches of his glorious kingdom, the splendor of his excellent majesty for many days, 180 days in all. And by the way, at one time, don't forget, after King Nebuchadnezzar came the Middle Persian. The, the breast of silver of the vision of the, the, that Daniel interpreted for Nebuchadnezzar, the times of Gentiles, they reigned across all the way from northern uh, uh, Africa, Ethiopia, all the way to India. There's a wide compass of land. And many other lands were, were undiscovered during that time. Okay, so they were the, they were the uh, um, ruling power of that day. So this king, he was inviting everyone to come to his uh, place in Sushan. If you, you can actually look, look up this in, uh, on, on YouTube as well as documentary channel. It's, today it's called Susa. It's a story of Susa. S-U-S-A, <laughs> Sushan. All right? And uh, in fact, you can see, literally you can see they, they, have unearthed, they have unearthed the palace. Of course, you can't see the structure anymore. You can see the ground though. And in chapter 1, it talks about black and white marble. I have seen in my own eyes, one of my missionary friends in the 90s, he went down there, he took a picture of him standing on the black and white marble, he showed it to me. And you see, you can see, and it's in chapter 1, it talks about the black and white marble flooring. So, uh, the, the, the palace has been uncovered. Okay, so it is still there. If you are king in, okay, studying and all that, not now, not now of course, but it's, it's Susa, okay, which is Shushan, ancient Shushan. And the story happened there. So the Bible tells us during this time he was eating and all that, and it was 180 days of celebration. Can you imagine not? All kinds of food. And the Bible, the Bible says that they, have, he, they were drinking from, they were drinking wine from goblets of gold, vessels of gold. So finally, after 180 days was over, he has a special party thrown for his special friends in his palace garden for another seven days. On the seventh day, he invited his queen. He said, go get my queen because he was so proud of her beauty. And he says, let her put on her, her, her crown when she comes. So they went to get her, but she said no. She said no to her husband. And this is where the story gets exciting because long before the evil happened, God was arranging circumstances. So she said no, and the king says, what? And his, his wise men were around him. He says, do you all hear that? Then the wise man says, King, if this is not handled, all the women of the entire kingdom of Persia will not respect their husbands when they hear this happen. So let's follow the story. Drop down. If it please the king, they said, let a royal decree go out from him. Let it be recorded in the laws of the Persians and the Medes so that it will not be altered. That Vashti shall come no more before King Ahasuerus and let the king give her, give her royal position to another who is better than she. So you know who is that, right? Esther. So God was working 
behind the scenes already. And uh, drop down. When the king's decree which he will make is proclaimed throughout all his empire, for it is great, all wives will honour their husbands, both great and small, and the reply re pleased the king. Now, this is a turning point. Okay, this is a turning point. Look at the, the phrase, all wives will honour, and look at it in the Hebrew. He vekel hanashim yet the no, which is to give from Nathan. Okay, look at this. Can you see yud he vav he in reverse? Okay, yud he vav he is in reverse. Now we say no, it's English is correct. It's forward. But remember, Hebrew reads from right to left. So it's reverse. You know why is it reverse? Out of these four acrostic, listen, two are reverse, two are forward. When it's forward, God is ruling directly. When it is reverse, He's overriding, He's overruling. And you see right now, He's overruling, deposing Queen Vashti, preparing the place for Esther, who will be in a position to help her people. Long before you have a need, long before the devil plans any evil against you, God has the provision. God sees beforehand. Amen. Can I have a good amen? amen? All right, so it's a turning point right down here. So now the call is, is made. The queen is deposed. I'm sure she regretted a lot, okay? And, um, and, and a call is made. The king wants to find a wife. So all the women of the province and the entire province, they, all, they were all summoned to, to come to... Uh, 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 Shushan the palace and uh, let's follow the story okay now when the turn came for Esther the daughter of Abihel the uncle of Mordecai who had taken her as his daughter to go into the king she requested nothing but what Haggai the king's eunuch the custodian of the women advised and Esther obtained favour in the sight of all who saw her now if you read earlier the Bible says she was, she was very beautiful and yet the Bible says that she obtained favour I want to say this, those of, those of uh, you, Pastor Lawrence, listen, who are good looking and all that, or you are pretty and all that, chances are sometimes you depend on that to help open doors instead of depending on favour. Even though Esther was beautiful, so were other women also. The way to stand out is always God's favour. God gives favour. Amen. Amen? 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 You, are, you are new to the business. There are many others who have who have made their mark long before you, from their grandfather to their father to hand it down to them, and you are new to the business. They, they've been there for... But you know what? Favour will make the difference. Amen. If people like you, people like you. Amen? Now, I want to tell you something else. That uh, the women... If you read... I, I wish I could read the entire portion for you, but we don't have time. But if you read the entire thing, you'll find that uh, it talks about the women who were brought there. Before this, they, 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 they see the king, they actually... Uh, bathed in perfume for six months. <laughs> and then another perfume for a number of period of time also. And uh, so the, the, the whole thing is uh, it's just amazing. Very elaborate, very prosperous, very lavish. So the Bible tells us, drop down, Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus into his royal palace in the 10th month and the king loved Esther more than all the other women. And she obtained grace and favour in his sight more than all the virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. So once again, you have grace and favour, which was my first seminar or conference that I did for Hillsong Church. It's called Grace and Favour. Amen? Amen and you, tr you put your trust in God's grace and favour, you go places. Amen. Amen. Doors will open. Don't depend on your smarts. See, the problem with, with us Singaporeans especially, you know, you're, you're so smart. You people are so smart. And, and, and you tend to depend on, depend on your smartness. You depend on your, your experience. No, thank God for, for, for education. Thank God for your experience. Thank God for your background. Thank God for whatever it is, help. But the thing is, depend completely in your heart on the Lord and His favour and His grace. Amen? Okay? So uh, once again, the Bible emphasised the Holy Spirit is endeavouring to give us, to bring home the point, she obtained grace and favour. Okay, drop down. 
Okay, then the king made a great feast called the Feast of Esther. He proclaimed a holiday in the province and gave gifts according to his generosity. Now, the drama intensifies. We come to the next chapter. The next chapter, we have this evil man, Haman. I told you just now, right? He's a type of the Antichrist to come. All right, Haman, he's from the Amalekites. And the Amalekites hate Israel. In fact, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, the Amalekites would, would come behind and, 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 and annihilate, kill, destroy children, people who are lagging behind, old people, in, 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 uh, people who are weak. And God says to Israel, never tolerate the Amalekites. So what is the Amalekite today? Your flesh. Whatever you tolerate, will, whatever you don't, you don't uh, destroy, will destroy you. Saul was told to kill the Amalekite. He didn't. When he was on the mountain of Gilboa, it was an Amalekite that killed him. So it's a principle. Today, we don't kill people. Love your neighbor. Love your enemies as well. Amen? So the principle in the Old Testament is always the principle of the flesh. Amalekite is your flesh. In fact, the word amal from the Hebrew, to labor hard, to labor with pain, amal. That means what? That is the flesh. Flesh is always fleshly effort. Kill it. Kill that fleshly effort. It's causing stress. It's causing sickness. It's causing lack of rest. God, robbing you of your peace of mind. This fleshly effort. I got to, I got to, I got to. It's up to me. It's up to me. It's, what will I do? What, what must I do? You know, you know, stop it. That's Amalekai. Kill it or it will kill you. That's the principle of the Bible, okay? So Haman is from this tribe, Amalekites. And we don't know how he ended up in Persia. He's not a Persian. And yet, he rose to the ranks to become the top vizier to the, to the king, top premier. He's the top next guy. And he has so much... Um, the king liked him so much, the reason is not given, that the king made him his right-hand man. And he's not even a Persian. So when, when he was in this position, he was so proud that one day he passed by the king's gate and Mordecai was there. Mordecai was the one who took care of uh, Esther, remember? Now, obviously, he's sitting at the king's gate. He's a man of some standing. He's an official in, in, the, in, the, in the kingdom as well. Or else he won't be allowed to be there in the king's gate. Are you listening? So Haman wanted him to bow down before him. And by that, Persian means worship. You bow before no other gods. Amen. Bow before no other men. Amen. I'm not referring to the courtesy bow of the Korean, Anyo Seyo, you know. All right. Drink Te Tarik halfway, face the other way. All those respectable terms is okay. This is not, this is worship. He wanted, he wanted Mordecai to worship him. When he found out that Mordecai was a Jew, he was even more you know, more incensed. He was, he was mad. He, don't forget, he has a hatred for Jews. So let's look at the next chapter. When Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow or pay him homage, Haman was filled with wrath, but he disdained to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had told him of the people of Mordecai, the Jewish people. Instead, look at how evil this man is. Haman sought to destroy all the Jews throughout the kingdom. He's not just wanting to destroy Mordecai, he wants to destroy all the Jews. Can you see that? What happens? Do you still believe God is working behind the scene even when superficially, outwardly you see things are going against you? And people that are not supposed to get promoted, get promoted, and then you are, you are told to go. You are retrenched. God has something better for you. Amen. You got to believe that. God is positioning you. God is getting, God getting you ready not to face something that company will face or whatever. God is behind the scene. And you, you have favor with God. So the more you believe that, when it happens, God, God gets the glory. That's why God wants faith. Because faith will, 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 will show God, demonstrate to God on your part that you will give Him the praise and the glory. Because you're believing God for favor. And when it happens, you know who to give glory to. But if you're walking, you know, just natural living after your senses, you don't believe and all that, even when God does something for you, you don't give Him glory. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Drop down. In the first month, which is the month of Nisan, in the 12th year of King Ahasuerus, Dekaspur 
which means the Lord. It's like a dice in those days, but they twist the dice. You know, have you seen it before? It's called Pur, where you get the word Purim. Until today, the Jewish people celebrate Purim as the victory over Haman and how God preserved the Jewish people during the time of Esther. It's the Feast of Esther. And they celebrate every year. It's called Purim, the plural of Pur. Pur is actually the dice or the lot. They twist it around. And you know what they did? Haman did with his, with his men. Say, let's, let's find a day to heal them. And I'll recommend to the king. So they, they turned the Pur, and the Pur came to the 13th day. Maybe it's from here that the tradition is that 13 is an evil day. But for God's people, an evil day, God's going to turn it to a memorable day. Amen. A day of victory. A day you will celebrate. You're about to see that happen. Okay? So it's on the 13th day, and uh, it fell on the, uh, uh, the, uh, drop down. The king's scribes were called on the 13th day of the first month, and it was sealed with the king's signet ring, sent to all the provinces. Okay. Any more? Drop down to chapter 3. Okay. And the letters were sent by couriers into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, to annihilate all the Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day. On the what day? 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar, and to plunder their possessions. Well, I didn't tell you this. Haman went to the king and said, King, I must tell you this. All right? That there is a group of people in your kingdom. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this. I'm, but I'm very concerned for you, king. You know my heart is for you, right, king? But this bunch of people, they, they practice their own laws. They don't care about your laws. And if they continue, they'll spread this message and it will, it will destroy your kingdom. You know, it, it, it'll be no profit to you. And the king says, really? What kind of people are these? They're the Jewish people. So I tell you what. Right? Allow me and my men to annihilate them for you. And they recommend the very day itself. Okay? And the king used his signet ring. One thing about the uh, 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 law of the Persians, you can even read about it in history, in secular history, is that once the law is made, you cannot change it. Even the king himself cannot change it. So the king used his signet ring. That was his signature in those days. On the clay tablet, yes. The death sentence is made. Women, children, throughout the entire kingdom. During this time, in the land of Jerusalem, already the decree has been made. I want to tell you all this part, okay? The decree has been made for, by Cyrus, which is uh, the predecessor, uh, um, not the immediate one, but predecessor of Ahasuerus. King Cyrus actually made a decree for all the Jewish people to return to Jerusalem. He said, y'all can go back. He permitted them and encouraged them to go. Because you know why? His name was prophesied by Isaiah the prophet long before he was born. Cyrus was the one, the king of Persia, that let the Jews go back. Okay? So the Jews went back, among whom are Ezra and Nehemiah. So when the story of Esther happened, Ezra and Nehemiah were in Jerusalem. Are you listening? So when the, pro the, the, the decree was made to destroy everyone in the kingdom, Judea at that time, Israel at that time, was under the kingdom of Persia, which means Ezra and Nehemiah will also be destroyed and all the people that came back. Now, the question is asked, how come Mordecai and Esther all stayed back? The question is not told us. Maybe the Lord told them to stay back. So this is the story that's happening. So you need to know the timing, okay? Which means all the remnant that came back, they'll also be destroyed. But long before that happened, God prepared someone in the palace. Isn't it amazing that God, God prepared Moses in the palace of Pharaoh? Small things, small things happen and God can... You know, a baby crying. Who would expect the daughter of Pharaoh bathing one day? All right, so a basket, she opened up. A baby crying will change the entire destiny of a nation. Turn her heart. The moment she said no and pushed the baby back, it's finished. God can work with smallest of things. And, and because we, 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 <clears throat> we are proud creatures, okay, I, I myself, me and Mark, okay? We are proud people. <laughs> Many of times we look for the big, big things. We miss out on the small, small things that God is doing in our life. But God can use the very small things to change things in your favor. Yeah. A baby crying. A woman's anger, temper, Vashti. And then God deposed. God can work through all this. And God will make the wrath of men to praise Him. Yeah. I think the Psalms, we have the verse up here. It says, Surely the wrath of men shall praise you. With the remainder of wrath, you shall gird yourself. You know what it means or not? 
Even man is angry towards God. Man is angry towards his, his children. God can use the wrath of man to praise him. You'll see it. And whatever wrath is remaining, God will use it to gird himself, clothe himself. Hallelujah. So, back to Esther again. So the day has been set. Are you with me so far? What's going to happen? Then the next chapter, chapter 4 tells us, Mordecai was weeping in sackcloth and ashes and he heard the decree and he, he sent a message. He, he didn't have access to the palace and Esther was in the palace. So he sent a message to, through a messenger to Esther saying, let's follow what he said. If you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise from, for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Can I say this to you? If God allows us to be used in doing something, consider it a privilege. Because you know what? Help will still come from somewhere. If you don't want to do the job, all right, can I say this? God is not hard up. When God tells you to do something, He's planning for you to get blessed. He's positioning you. Of all the, the boats, I mean, I mean, Peter is not the only one with a boat on the Lake of Galilee. There are other boats as well. But when Jesus stepped into his boat and Jesus said, can, can I borrow your boat to preach to the people? Because they are crowding on me. He preached from the waters. And, and you know, the acoustic is amazing. When you preach from the waters, it just carries your voice to all the thousands of people by the Lake of Galilee. Right? Now, that is wasted time, right? In a sense, quote unquote wasted because the, the, the fishermen could use it for fishing. Like if you think tonight is wasted time, let me tell you this, waiting on the Lord is never wasted time because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Even the youths shall faint and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord will mount up with wings as eagles. Yeah. Run and not be weary. Wow, what is that? Walk and not faint. The secret is waiting upon the Lord. So let the Lord have it. Amen. After the Lord finished preaching, the Lord says, Peter, let's go fishing. Peter said, oh, no, no, no. Uh, let's go fishing. And he gave him what? Net breaking, boat sinking, load of fishes. He's a good paymaster. Now, imagine if he went to someone, someone else's boat. The person with the recipient of all the blessings. When the Lord tells you to do something, He's positioning you. It's a privilege. Because if you don't, relief and enlargement will come from another place. And who is to say, why do you came to the kingdom for such a time as this? Amen? Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai. I always believe there are leaders there, sitting down there, because they don't want to give up something or whatever it is when you know, they sit down there. And they are seeing other people with the kind of blessing that they could have had, with the kind of anointing and calling that they could have had. But they said no to God, and that person said yes. And the person got what you are supposed to get. There are some things that God rewards. Something all of us can have by grace, through faith. But there are some things He gives you the grace, it can be in vain if you don't use it. But if you use it, He reward you for using the grace He first gave you. Amen. And that's called reward. All right, drop down. No more dropping, okay. Now we come to the, we got only one acoustic so far, right? Now we come to the chapter where we have two acoustics. Turning point. So now it's desperate situation, amen. So Esther is about to go and see the king. Esther is about to meet up with the king. And she knew one of the, another law of the Persian is that if you come to the king's presence uninvited, you die. The king must invite you or if you come in, the king must extend his scepter to show that he has pleasure with you. So Esther says, hey, you guys, all right, pray for me. If I perish, I perish. So the time came for Esther. Next chapter. Now it happened on the third day that Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court, court of the king's palace. All right, and drop down. It says here, it was when the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court that she found what? Favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther went near and touched the top of the scepter. And the king said to her, what do you wish, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given to you up to half the kingdom. Okay, drop down. This is the part, verse 4. So Esther answered, If it pleases the king, let the king and Haman come today to the banquet that I prepared for him. Ladies, this is called timing. 
She didn't say, save my people, you know? Sometimes you got to learn. Amen. Go through his stomach. Amen. And then, you know, invite, you know, and uh, create a suspense. I mean, it's amazing what she did. And she said, let, let the king and Haman come. This verse 4 here, let the king and Haman come, is an acrostic. Let's look at it. Yavo Hamelech ve Haman Hayom. Now, this time it's forwards because it's, it's ruling straight away. Yud Hey Vav Hey. Everything got to do with this banquet which you're about to see. Okay? So the, oh, Haman was so proud. Haman was so happy. He went back and this is what he said to his family and all that. All right? And uh, drop down. At the banquet of wine, the king asked Esther, what is your petition? It shall be done. Okay, next verse. Then Esther answered and said, my petition and request is this. So even at the banquet, she says that, I want to have another banquet tomorrow. Creating suspense. She, you know, the king is saying, tell me what you want. I'll give you half the kingdom. I, I just want this. This is my request. Please come tomorrow. <laughs> All right, I have another banquet. And that's the, the day that changed everything. Drop down. So Haman went out that day, joyful, glad hearted. Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate and he did not stand or tremble before him. He was filled with indignation against Mordecai. And, and Haman restrained himself and went home and sent and called for his friends and his wife Zeresh. Drop down. Where are we now? Haman told them of his great riches, the multitude of his children, everything in which he told us, he boasted to all his friends. This guy got a problem with pride, isn't it? Amen? So pride, is, pride goes before a fall, it's true. Everything which the king had promoted him and how he had advanced him above the officials and servants of the king. And he says, besides Queen Esther, he invited no one but me <laughs> to come with the king to the banquet. Tomorrow, I'm again invited by her along with the king. All right, drop down. Yet, all this avails me nothing so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. So the wife said, I recommend uh, build a gallow really, really high. 50 cubits high. 75 feet. You know how, many, how crazy is it? And it was built behind his house, you know. You see later on, it's built behind his house because you want to see him hanging. Hang, hang him high. And the thing pleased Haman. Now, verse 13, yet all this avails me nothing is another acrostic. And this time, reverse. Look at this. This avails me nothing from, from reverse. Yud, Hey, Vav, hey. He's angry at Mordecai and God is causing the wrath of men to praise him. Because had he forgiven, had he not, like, you know, changed, whatever, I mean, but because of this, God will cause the wrath of men to praise him. So whatever people do against the Lord or against his people, God will cause it to praise him. Just wait, just wait. Even your personal life, the devil may have seemed to make inroads. Just wait. The health you'll get back is, is stronger. Amen. Amen. The provision will be larger. Amen. The place is a wealthier place. David says, it was good for me to be afflicted. You have brought me to a large place. We're not camping in the valley. The Lord, He leads me through the valley. He not lead me to, to stay there, but through. Amen? It doesn't say bypass. Collect 200. No. Through the valley. Go back to Esther 5 again. All right. So next chapter I must read to you. Okay, this, this is my, my favorite chapter of all. Coming to a close. This is my favorite chapter. So I must read to you. Again, I told you just now, right? God uses what? Simplest things. Like for example, it is God who gives the beggar or the king sleep. We take sleep for granted, but God gives sleep. And God can remove sleep. And sometimes you spend a sleepless night, ask the Lord, what do you want to say? <laughs> take your Bible, if the, you know, even if it's in a check or whatever, take your Bible, use that time with the Lord. When you touch the Bible, you touch provision. You touch the Bible, you touch health. You touch the Bible, you, you touch youth renewing qualities, amen. You touch the Bible, you touch wisdom. So that night, that night, say that night. That night when the family of Haman is talking about building a 75 feet high gallows to hang Mordecai there. When all this evil scheme was happening in this house, the same night, that night, the king cannot sleep. So 
One was commanded to bring the book of the records of the chronicles and they were read before the king. This part I don't understand. Of all the things that you do, right? You might want to hear music or whatever, but he asked for the book of the chronicles. You know how boring it is? The book of... Can, uh, you go to the data side of things and let, read to me all the data. It's like... But it was God. Maybe he wanted to bore himself to sleep. I don't know. Okay? So read the chronicles. And it was found... Kind of long story short, okay, because of time. It was found that, that Mordecai actually did the king a favour. Mordecai heard about these two uh, doorkeepers who tried to kill, who plotted to kill the king. And he revealed it to someone who revealed it to the uh, authorities and all that and they seized upon this guy. But Mordecai's name was in the chronicles but he was never rewarded. The king never knew about it but for a sleepless night. And the king said this, what honour or dignity has been bestowed on Mordecai for this? Now he knows his name. Actually, your wife is related to him. So he didn't know Mordecai. He says, what honour or dignity has been bestowed on Mordecai for this? And the king's servants who attended him said, nothing has been done for him. At the same time, guess who came that morning, very early in the morning, to recommend the gallows. Haman! He came in. Haman just entered. The king said, who's in the court? All right? To suggest that the king hanged Mordecai on the gallows prepared for him. So the king says, okay, I trust this guy. This is my right-hand man. Might as well ask him for advice. Drop down. The king's servant said to him, Haman is there, standing in the court. Let him come in. So Haman came in. The king asked him, uh, Haman, what shall be done for the man whom the king delights to honour? Now Haman thought in his heart, whom would the king delight to honour? More than moi. More than me. <coughs> I'm sure that he even came in. When he said that, he said, <coughs> <coughs> All right, what, 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 what should I do for the, for the man that I delight to honour? <sighs> Which means you're proud. You think everything is about you. You're so vain. You think everything is about you. <laughs> right, next verse. And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delights to honour, let a royal robe be brought which the king has worn. <laughs> and a horse on which the king has ridden, in other words, your Porsche or your Lamborghini, which has a royal crest placed on its head. Let this robe and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that he may array the man whom the king delights to honour. Then parade him on horseback to the city square and proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honour. Then the king said to Haman, hurry, take the robe, the horse, as you have suggested, do for Mordecai, the Jew. <laughs> Even the word the Jew is there. Who sits within the king's gate, leave nothing undone of all that you have spoken. Hey, when God turns it around, it's turn, my friend. Your day is coming. Your day is coming. You might be retrenched, might not have a job, you, that, that girl might have dumped you. Amen. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, sorry. <laughs> or the guy dumped you or whatever. You know, dumb is not a good word, okay? Actually, he promoted you. Because he was dragging you down. Yeah, I hear a girl saying, yeah. Run her one lot from you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So now, the, the guy who's pulling you down is gone. He thinks he's gone because, you know, but God put it in his heart so that you are set free to go higher where God wants you to be. And all the people said, yeah. turn around. So watch this now. Drop down. Haman took the rope and the horse, a red Mordecai, led him on horseback to the city square. Remember he recommended one man shouting? He became the man. <laughs> and proclaimed before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honour. Afterwards, Mordecai went back to the king's gate. Haman hurried to his house for mourning with his head covered. Haman told his wife, Zeresh, and all his friends, everything that happened. And his wife encouraged him like this. If Mordecai before whom you have begun to fall is of Jewish descent, you will not prevail. You also fall. Wow, so, so good advice, huh? You are the one to recommend the, the gallows. Then verse 14. While they were still talking with him, the king's eunuchs came, hastened to bring Haman to the banquet which Esther had prepared. Remember that? Now, the turnaround. Let's go to the banquet now. We are coming to the end. And King and Haman went, the king and Haman went to dine with Queen Esther 
on the second day at the banquet of wine, the king asked, what's your petition, Queen Esther? It should be granted to you. And she told the king about her people, all that's happened to her people and all that. And uh, Queen Esther says, we have been sold. No, if I found favor in your sight, you know how she presented the whole thing beautifully, but because of time, I'm going to verse four. We have been sold, my people and I, to be destroyed, to be killed, to be annihilated. Had we been sold as male and female slaves, I would have held my tongue, although the enemy could never compensate for the king's loss. So this is the first time King Ahasuerus actually realized that Esther was a Jew. The earlier part of the story, which I didn't read to you just now, it's all there. You can read everything, right? <laughs> I'm exciting you actually with the portions because many of you know the story, but, but actually Mordecai told her, don't reveal who you are until the right time. So now that the king realized, oh no, he made a decree against her. And, and she says, the enemy has done this. And the king says, who is he? And where is he who would dare presume in his heart to do such a thing? There's only one other guest. <laughs> and he's hearing the whole thing happening right now. And all of a sudden he realized, Esther is a Jew, is a Jewess. And Esther said, the adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Haman was terrified before the king and queen. All right, the king got so mad, the king arose in his wrath. He went to the palace garden to gather himself. But Haman stood before Queen Esther, pleading for his life. So he jumped from where he was and the queen was in a special place. And he went to where the queen was and pleading for his life for he saw that evil was determined against him by the king. Now, we have the acrostic. Evil was determined. Look at this in the Hebrew. Evil was determined against him. Yud, He, Bav, He. The whole thing came back to his door, doorstep. Who did it? Who did it? God. He would never have dreamed that, right? So he was pleading with Esther. Go back to the story. But he was on Esther's couch. He jumped to where the food, his table was. He go to Esther's couch. At the same time, the, the king came in and the king saw Haman had fallen across the couch where Esther was. The king says, will he also assault the queen while I'm in the house? As the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. All his men covered the face. And in those days, covered the face means you'll never see light anymore. Finito. Next, next verse. Now, Habona, one of the eunuchs said to the king, look, the gallows, 50 cubits high, which Haman made for Mordecai, who spoke good on the king's behalf is standing at the house of Haman. The king says, hang him. <laughs> it was in his house. His wife can see, all his relatives can see, the boasting and all that, all those friends of his can see in the backyard, him hanging up there. So they hang Haman on the gallows and the king's wrath subsided. The very thing, I, I, I can tell you stories from history, the very thing the devil meant, God turned it and, and, and cut off his head with it. Like Goliath's sword. In case you are here today and you're planning things against a believer. <laughs> and believers, don't rejoice. The Bible says, pray for them which despitefully use you. You know why? They need your prayer. Because the very thing sometimes that you men can come back on you. We need to pray for you. You don't realize this, many of you, you are God's favorite person. He that toucheth you, toucheth the apple of my eye, the Lord says. Now we come to the, the closing part, chapter 8. Oh, drop down anymore? Oh, sorry. Before, we, before that, there's one more acrostic from chapter 7. Remember the part where the king says, Who is he and where is he, right? Now, this is not yud heh vav -he. Do you remember God appeared in the burning bush to Moses? And, God, and Moses says, God, what, what shall I say? You, you're sending me to the people of Israel, but they, they'll ask me, what, what is your name? Who is he that sent you? God says, I am that I am. In Hebrew, Ehye, Asher Ehye. I am that I am. Ehye is I am. The number of times Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the door. I am the way. I am the life. They came to arrest him in the garden, right? He stepped forward. He says, they say, we're looking for Jesus. He says, I am. They all fell. I am. Ehye. Say Ehye. I am. It is spelled like, uh, the word is like this. All right. E, Aleph, He, Yud, He. Memorize it if you can. Aleph, He, Yud, He. It means I am. All right. 
Who is he? Where is he? It's actually acrostic for a here. Who is he and where is he? Who is also who in, in uh, pronounced as who in Hebrew. There's a lot of uh, English words that can go all the way back to Hebrew as well. Like who? Huze veeze. Who is he and where is he? Yud. Sorry. Uh, Aleph. He. Ehye. Vav. No, Yud. He. Sorry. Ehye. Yes. Ehye. I am. The final signature. Five acrostic number of grace in the book of Esther. And chapter 8 tells us there was such a celebration and the king, all right, told Esther, took off the signet ring which he had taken from Haman and gave it to Mordecai. Esther appointed Mordecai over the house of Haman. Verse 3, Esther spoke again to the king, fell on his feet, and she implored him with tears to counteract the evil of Haman the Agagite and the scheme which he had devised against the Jews. We still have a problem, right? Once the king had, has signed something, right, on the clay tablet, he has punched it. It cannot be reverse. So the day is coming, right, 13th? Then the king said to Mordecai, Mordecai, here's a, in essence, empty clay tablet. Whatever you write, I'll put my seal. And Mordecai says, every Jew in the land, okay, you have a right to defend yourself. And everyone has a right to kill those who try to kill you. And the Bible tells us, chapter 8, you yourself write a decree concerning the Jews as you please in the king's name and seal it with the king's signet. The king is talking to him. For whatever is written, the king's name and sealed with the king's signet ring, no one can revoke. Any more? Drop down? Yes. So Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white, which is the flag of Israel. Yeah, today. Blue and white. With a great crown of gold and a garment of fine linen and purple, and the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews had light and gladness, joy and honor. And in every province and city, wherever the king's command and decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a holiday. Then many of the people of the land became Jews because fear of the Jews fell upon them. Those not Jews also became Jews. What's your name? Abraham. What's your name? Zuckerberg. What's your name? Mark Mayer. What's your name? Lawrence Lebrinsky. <laughs> What's your name? Chiram Goldberg. <laughs> and you? Gabriel Iceberg. <laughs> so the Jews, they had so much favor. People were so scared. And Mordecai became the right hand man. Who dares to kill you, right? You know, and, and, and there were some uh, enemies that were killed during that time. And the feast, the 13th, became the feast of Purim. All right, the, 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 and the 14 as well. Two days of celebration for the Jewish people and it's called Purim because of the Lot. And God turned the whole thing around. In a book that the name of God is not mentioned, we have God overriding the situation. Now, the question I, thought, I was asking you all just now is why didn't God put His name openly, right? It was a period of low army. Long before they went to captivity, God, God already said that during that time, if you are in the land of the Gentiles, I will hide my face. Deuteronomy 31, all right, I'll, I'll, because of time, drop down to hide my face. God says, in that day, I'll hide my face from them. Why? Because they have rejected the Lord. Now look at me. One of Hosea, Prophet Hosea's son, God told him, name your son, Lo Ami, not my people. You're not my people. Okay, so that period of time when Israel is in captivity, it's called low army period, not my people period. Yet, even then, God's heart is compassionate. He cannot acknowledge them openly in their rebellion, right? But He can actually work behind the scenes in their favor to protect them, to preserve them, to bless them. Amen. Now, we are no more low army. In fact, in low army, there's a prophecy there even when God says, no, my, no, no longer my people, show them Hosea 1, 8 and 9. 1, 8 says, God says, call his name Lo-Ami for you're not my people and I'll not be your God. Do we have verse 10? No, we don't. So I have to read verse 10 from the Bible. Right? Now I'm going to read from Romans 9. Believe it or not, verse, verse 10 is quoted by Paul 
in Romans chapter 9. What a good way to end our service tonight. Amen? Are you all ready to listen? Okay. This is what God says in Romans 9. Verse 25. As God... No, before that, verse 24. Even us whom God called, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles, Chinese, Indian, all Gentiles. Amen. Chindian also Gentile. As God says also in Hosea, I will call them my people who were not my people and her beloved who was not beloved. It shall come to pass in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people. There they shall be called sons of the living God. Jesus came and fulfilled. We no longer live in a day, even when we fail and, 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 and blow it, God does not leave us. He does not hide His face. They were under the law in the Old Testament. We have Jesus as our high priest. And God says, where I used to say, not my people, you are now sons of the living God. Amen. Amen. And uh, many, many years after that, Gloria Esther, Jesus will come back to the restored remnant, Ezra, Nehemiah. God allowed them to go back to see what they'll do with the Messiah when He comes. And unfortunately, they put the Messiah on the cross. So there was another scattering of the 80, 70, until now, it still lasts, until Jesus returns and loves Israel again. And Israel will cry and Israel will say, Baruch haba Hashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And, and when Jesus hung on the cross, the Pharisees said to Pontius Pilate, who put Jesus' title above his head, change the title, change the title. Why were they so ad adamant about changing the title? What they put on, on top of Jesus was in Latin, in, in Greek, in Hebrew. And it says this, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. And look at this here, this picture. This is what in three languages, Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. In, in look at the, do you see the acrostic there? Yeshua is spelled Yud. The next word is Ha Yahudim. Ha Malek, Ha Yahudim. Okay? Yeshua ha Nazari ve Melek ha Yahudim. Okay, next letter is Vav, and the final word ha Yahudim is He. Yeshua starts with Yud, ha Nazari of Nazareth, ve Melek starts with Vav, ha Yahudim of the Jews, He. So, what the Pharisees and the people of Israel saw when He hung there on the cross was Yah. Way. And yet, the Pontius Pilate just put his name, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Yeshua, Jesus, Ha Nazari of Nazareth, Ve Melech, King, Ha Yahudim, the Jews. It's just his title. And yet, the Pharisees saw it, the people of Israel saw it, Yud He Vav He, being crucified on that cross. And that's why the Pharisees said, Change it, change it. And Pontius Pilate said, what I have written, I have written. God will not allow anyone to change it. Yahweh, Yahweh came and lived among us and died as our Savior and rose from the dead to be our high priest and the shepherd. In Psalms 22, my God, my God, it starts with my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Psalms 22. Psalms 23 is today where he is right now. The Lord is my shepherd. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. Psalms 24, say, who is the king of glory? He'll come back again. Lift up everlasting doors. Lift up the gates. Jesus is coming for us. Amen. And we welcome him. Amen. Amen. To Jesus be all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed all across this place right now. If you have never put your trust in Jesus as your saviour, I'm going to pray for you right now that everything that happened to Esther and the people, Jewish people, you will experience it as well. Don't forget, he says, this is my name. Whatever you need, it's like a blank check. I am, fill in. What do you want him to be? Well, the doctor says, I have this condition. I am your doctor. I am your healer. I am your physician. I, I, I'm always tired. I am your strength. I'm concerned that 
my, grandpa, my grandfather died young and my father died young. I am your length of days. You don't realize that, Pastor Prince, uh, my business is going down. Everything is going down. I'm your banker. I'm your provider. I am that I am. He stands before you in all His fullness, in His inexhaustible supply. And He says, take me as your, you fill in the blank. So if that is you, wherever you are, you are right now, you want forgiveness of sins, you want to be part of God's people, pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe Christ died for my sins and you raised Him from the dead when all my sins were cleared and I was justified in Him. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Saviour, now and forever, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Let me just bless you. Thank you, Lord. The Lord bless you with the blessings that He bestowed on Esther. Favor and grace. May you obtain favor and grace in the sight of those that God wants you to have favor with. And for those that are not good for you, God, close the doors. But open doors of opportunity, doors of friendship, doors of relationships that are great for you, that are good for you. The Lord give you favor to those that really matter. The Lord grant you to be at the right place at the right time. Always. And the Lord grant you that no weapon form against you, even those that you do not know of. And every tongue spoken or that is speaking even right now against you or any attempt or plan of the enemy of the evil Haman against you, the Lord caused it to fall to the ground and not prosper. But the Lord caused everything that you do to prosper. Everything you touch. And may your leaf always be green. The Lord grant you and bless you with wisdom, understanding, knowledge. That when you open up the scriptures, they will jump out at you. They will talk to you so that you can touch life. You can touch wisdom. You can touch provision. You can touch health, wholeness, and healing for your body. The Lord grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. And may all that you do, think and say, Glorify one, Yahweh, Yeshua, Yahweh who saves. In Jesus' name, and all the people said, God bless you. We'll see you again. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. But don't go just yet. If you'd like to receive prayer, share your testimony, or find out more about Gospel Partner, just click the link on this screen. If not, I'll see you in the next episode.